welcome to the lesson today uh, that we're going to discuss in order to sharpen our skills and knowledge in physics. Um, in particular, today, um, we are going to look at um, weight, mass, as well as uh, a Newton's second law of motion. Therefore, we are going to apply this, uh, these concepts to um, an elevator and uh, be able to solve problems uh, in physics where an elevator has been uh, used to conceptualize the concepts in physics. Uh, many are times that uh, physics problems occur, which requires to calculate the acceleration, even in different forces. And so today we're going to apply these principles in order to enable us to develop concepts, as well as um, have skills and knowledge enable us to solve problems which require us to, to solve problems um, which pertain to use of an elevator. And here we go. So as I stated the earlier on, um, first of all, we need to define what weight is. Uh, we are aware that uh, uh, actually weight is the pull of gravity on an object. And that's why uh, different objects have, can have uh, different weights to different uh, uh, points. Earth and in other planets, because that one depends on the pull of gravity on the object. And so weight is equal to mass multiplied by gravitational field strength. That is the strength of the gravity on that particular planet. On our planet Earth, the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kg. That is, um, uh, this is the estimated value. And the weight, as I indicated, is actually mass times the gravitational field strength. And so mass is uh, measured in kilograms, while uh, weight is measured in newtons. So what is mass? Mass is the amount of matter in a body. And as I indicated the area, said mass is measured in kilograms. And mass everywhere or even on different planets, it would be the same uh, because it's merely a quantity of matter. And so today we are going to apply what we have discussed here uh, on uh, an elevator, which is uh moving in the first case scenario that i have uh, quoted as case one we are going to look at uh, an elevator moving with the upward acceleration meaning that uh, this elevator is accelerating actually upwards and so we in an elevator it means that we have pictured a person inside here it is uh, um, acted on by uh, the force downwards, which is the weight, which is mass times the uh, acceleration due to gravity, as well as another force, which is opposite, which is the uh, actual tension, which is enables to move upwards. And so in this scenario, for the elevator to accelerate upwards, it means that uh, the tension 
or the force pulling it upwards would be greater than the weight. This is the basic principle that everyone should know. One elevator to accelerate upwards simply means the force pulling it upwards will be greater than the force which is actually um, pulling it down with the weight. And so the, the basic concept is actually coming from Newton's second law where we're saying force is equal to mass times acceleration. And so here we need to look at the resultant force, which is equal to mass times acceleration. As we stated earlier, since the force upwards, which is the tension, is greater than uh, the weight, it means that uh, we will say T, which is the force, uh, which is um, making the elevator move upwards, minus the weight, which is mg, is equal to mass acceleration, mass times acceleration, which means that uh, the resultant force here is such that it is greater than the weight of an object. And so we can rearrange this to find the, the tension or this force, which is enables the elevator to move upwards. And we may have to take uh, this quantity this other side, and therefore it will be tension is equal to mass times acceleration plus mass times gravitational due to acceleration, uh, as well as, so here we can just factor out mass. So we're going to have mass in the brackets, acceleration plus uh, acceleration due to gravity. And so here, the basic concept we need to, uh, to know is that when an elevator is moving upward, it means that the force making to move upwards will be greater than the weight. The second scenario, which we have called uh, as a, uh, an elevator which is moving with the downward acceleration, simply means the weight is greater than the force which is opposing it uh, upwards. Therefore, the resultant force will be such that the weight will be greater than the force which is pulling um, actually upwards. And therefore, mg, which is the weight, will be greater than or greater than the tension. And, and therefore, we can say the mg minus the tension is equal to mass times acceleration. Similarly, we can make t the subject of the formula, and this gives us mass in brackets acceleration due to gravity minus acceleration close bracket. And so here the basic concept we know is that if a, an elevator is moving uh, downwards with acceleration, it means that the weight is actually greater than the, the force which is opposing it upwards. Uh, the third uh, scenario, which I've called uh, scenario three or case three, is the situation where the elevator is at rest or it's moving with a constant velocity. So if the elevator is not moving, it means that uh, the acceleration is actually zero. And if it's moving with constant velocity, also it means that uh, the acceleration is also zero, meaning that the tension or the force upwards will be equal to the force pulling it downwards. And so that's why you notice that here, acceleration, as we indicated here, in this case, if acceleration is equal to zero here, it means that mg will be equal to t. And so, we well, as indicated, acceleration is zero here, and therefore the upward force will be equal to the downward force. And now we have to apply uh, what we have learned, the concept we have learned to a question. I have a simple question here where we have a pulley. Uh, on this pulley, um, we have the tensions on the rope here which is the force, the tension in the rope, the force on the rope. 
and um, we assume that uh, a session due to gravity is 9.8 meters per square seconds, and that the pulley and the rope are massless, meaning that we will not consider the mass the masses of the pulley as well as the rope, and that uh, there is no friction where actually the rope is passing here. So we eliminate those factors. So we'll not consider the mass of the pulley as well as the mass of the rope as well as the reflection. So we have two masses hanging. One mass here is 15 kg, and the other mass is 10 kg. And so on this system, we assume that if this is not extensible, meaning that the rope cannot extend that uh, 15 kg mass as well as the 10 kg mass will accelerate at the same uh, rate and therefore we would say that uh, this system is such that uh, 15 kg mass will be going down while the 10 kg mass will be going up okay and therefore as we indicated uh, we have to get the um, resultant force for the 15 kg mass. So since the 15 kg mass, as we indicated here, it's going down, it simply means um, the weight of that mass will be greater than the tension in the string, and therefore, which is equal to mass times acceleration. So the whole of this uh, question actually is it's on second law of motion where we're saying force is equal to mass and the acceleration. But the only thing concept that we are learning here is to see the resulting force as a result of the acceleration. And so if you look at uh, uh, mass two, this mass will be moving up, meaning that the tension here the force on the tension will be greater than the, so the weight of the 10 kg mass. Therefore, the tension here minus the 10 kg mass multiplied by G, which is its weight, will be equal to mass times acceleration. And so we can make the first equation here and make T the subject of the formula by taking T beside. And then we will have tension is equal to mass of the 15 kg mass times acceleration due to gravity uh, minus mass times um, acceleration. And so we note that uh, also for the other one, we can make T the subject of the formula here. And say, as we indicated that uh, actually the, the tension cannot extend, the rope cannot extend, it means that the, the tension will be the same. Okay, for the 15 kg mass as well as for the 10 kg mass. Therefore, here all we need to do is just to equate the equations. So we have equated this equation here, which is here, as to this equation, which is here, because the tension here is the same as the tension for the 10 kg mass. And then we can rearrange them. So that uh, the like terms are together for uh, acceleration due to gravity, we bring the terms to one side. And where there is acceleration, we take the like terms to the other side. So we can factor out after uh, collecting the like terms together, we can factor out acceleration here. And it means that we can make now a subject of formula. This is the result we get. And we may now substitute whatever we are given here. We substitute the mass, 15 kg mass here, times the application minus the mass there, which is 10 kg, times 9.8, which is the acceleration due to the over. The addition of the two to add the 10 kg mass to the 15 kg mass. 
what you get is 1.9. So this is the acceleration of all the two masses. That is the 10 kg mass as well as the 15 kg mass. So if we ask the, again, the, remember the question was asking us to also calculate the tension. Okay. We find the acceleration of the system and the tension. Therefore, for the tension, we just collect one of these equations. Remember, materials, the subject of the formula for this one. So we can get one of the equations. Remember here, we had t is equal to 15 kg mass times g minus the mass of the 15 kg times acceleration. The other t was mass of the 10 kg multiplied by acceleration plus mass of the 10 kg times acceleration to the gravity. Okay. And so we may get one of them. We decided to get the first equation. And therefore, just substitute and get the tension is on the low power 1.7, 117.4 1, newtons. So this tension is the same. Here, it is the same for the 15 kg mass as well as the 10 kg mass. And so this is the, how we can apply as well the principles on, on an elevator for the uh, which is moving either upwards or which is moving downwards. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson today um, where we have learned uh, a few concepts on um, the resultant force as a result of an object moving. In particular, we are looking at the elevator. So uh, next time, again, we'll look at the other aspects of physics. So remember to subscribe to my YouTube and uh, so that you can so continue getting the feedback from me on the, the solved questions in the physics. And uh, also uh, that you may gain uh, knowledge and um, skills uh, to solve physics problems. I thank you.